You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Braves postcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Grant McCauley alongside Jake Mastriani after what was a tough day for the Atlanta Braves as their bats were unable to solve the riddle, the enigma that is Zach Wheeler, one of the best pitchers in the game. And he proved why over the first seven innings of this one as the Phillies were able to blank the Braves by a 3-0 score on Saturday, take a two games to one lead in this series and deal uh, yet another blow, at least potentially and for now, based on the head-to-head matchups between these two teams and the importance of them, a blow to Atlanta's hopes of really making some hay in this series, most certainly. We'll talk all about that. We will set up the Game 4 finale, which happens on Sunday Night Baseball. Before we do any of that, though, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta here on YouTube, and to Locked On Braves, wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use the code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match of up to $100. Well, Jake, we knew this was going to be one of, if not the premier pitching matchup, I think, of this series. It certainly delivered, unfortunately, for the Braves. Max Freed, he didn't make a lot of mistakes, but he made enough. The Phillies were able to capitalize on, and Zach Wheeler, well, uh, he was pretty much flawless. He was. This is just one of those games you kind of tip your hat. Like I said on Thursday's game, if this were a, a series in April on the road like this, you say this is just two good teams uh, that, are, that are playing each other, and uh, sometimes the other team's going to come out on top there. But the Phillies, unfortunately, in this one, as you said, you know, same amount of hits, but the Phillies just had the big ones in this one against Max Freed, and they were able to find that home run ball, and the Braves couldn't. Yeah, not necessarily the quantity, but certainly the quality in this one. A couple of home runs for the Phillies, nearly a third one in this one. We'll talk about why the third one was not a home run. That was one of the few highlights for the Braves in this game. Uh, but yeah, as you keyed in on this pitching matchup, you knew, based on Zach Wheeler's history against the Braves, we saw in the broadcast, what, 15 career starts coming in against Atlanta's 7-3 and three record, but an ERA just over two, tons of strikeouts. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, from the Atlanta metro area, Paulding County, uh, grew up watching the Braves and uh, over the course of his big league career has had a lot of success against that club. He did it again tonight with seven innings of shutout ball. He also picked up some big strikeouts when he needed them to short circuit a Braves rally in particular at the expense of Jorge Soler. We'll get more into that later, but it, it just comes down to this, I, I think, as far as this is concerned with uh, these two pitchers. Max Reed didn't pitch poorly, but uh, Zach Wheeler, he was just that much better. And that proves kind of why he is who he is and why he gets paid the money that he gets paid most certainly to front this Phillies rotation. He's been one of the better pitchers in baseball for a while now, one of the more, more reliable pitchers in all of baseball. It's why the Phillies, you know, spent so much money to, to keep him, not so much the long-term deal, that contract, but the high AAV, because you cannot let that guy go. He is a frontline starter. He is a perennial Cy Young contender. And unfortunately, the Braves helped his Cy Young case today and weren't able to help out their teammate Chris Sale because this was just a great performance and a big game in a big spot. For the Phillies, you know, the Braves come in there into their place and win this series, which is not possible now, and they get back in that division race, then suddenly, you know, there's a little bit of pressure on this Phillies team. So Mm -hmm. I thought it was a big start for Zach Wheeler and a big game for the Phillies to just stop any kind of real threat and momentum in this series from this Braves team. And they got their ace to give them that performance in this game. Yeah, they did. And they're going to have another high paid ace who's going to be throwing in game four, which we'll talk about later on as well. Uh, Max Freed, though, in this game, I don't want to you know belabor the point here. He was not bad. He allowed three runs, uh, all of them earned on five hits, two of those solo home runs at Mundo Sosa, who got the Phillies on the board in the bottom of the third, then a home run by Trey Turner in the sixth. Phillies added another run in the seventh. Braves had a relay that was well executed, but just late on a sliding play at home plate. And just like that, I mean, that third run felt like, at least in the moment, Man, it's with the way Wheeler was pitching, especially, and the fact that the outs were dwindling for the Braves, that that might be, you know, too much to overcome. As it turns out, the the Braves' offense really just wasn't able to ever get started in this game. Yeah, it didn't didn't much matter in the end, but you're right. That felt like a big run, and even bigger when Max Free was able to strand that runner at third base with one out, too. If you got to four there, you, you definitely felt like it was over. I mean, in the end, it was over. Either way, but that was a big run there, but it's also a big seventh inning for Max Free. Look, he didn't look as sharp in that inning as he had early on, but to be able to give the seventh inning, we talked about the bullpen a lot lately, how much they've been able to use for him to be able to get through that and still only give up three runs. So they keep that streak alive as well with Brave starters. But uh, yeah, I mean, a good game for Max Freed. Like I said, it just in the end didn't matter because the offense couldn't score because Zach Wheeler was just that good. 
Yeah. And that's just kind of what it came down to in this one. There's not a whole lot to pick apart. There weren't a whole lot of opportunities for the Braves against Zach Wheeler because he was so good. And when he did get, uh, if you want to call it on the ropes, if that's the version of what it was, he was just able to bear down and continue doing what he does best. And that is just carving up lineups. He does it as well or better than just about anybody in Major League Baseball. He proved it again on this night. Uh, couldn't put another run on the board, though. Or excuse me, the Phillies could have put another run on the board. Could have come in that seventh inning as Austin Hayes hit a long fly ball out to right center field. Michael Harris has done a lot of impressive things. He's made a lot of impressive catches. I know the stakes aren't quite as high for this one as the one he made against the Phillies last October, but leaping up, hanging over the top of the wall, and then coming back in to the field of play and dragging that ball back in. I mean, even Austin Hayes, he's the man that hit it. He was uh, tipping his helmet as he was on his way off the field. That's about as good a catch, I think, Jake, as you're going to see. Yeah, incredible catch for Michael Harris. And just going back on it, off the, off the bat, again, it was one, another one of those. I didn't think it was going to go that far, but it just kept carrying. You just kept say, seeing Michael Harris, you know, tracking under it, not having to run full speed, so able to kind of, you know, carry himself to the wall there but it kind of went over his head he had to leap back and and catch it almost took him over the fence just an incredible catch you know what he does out there look I know he's had his ups and downs at the plate this year but just what he does defensively for you in center field and it's not even just those types of catches which he's capable of doing it's the fact that you see balls that are laced in the in the corners or uh, in the alleys there and you just see Michael Harris glide over to him and catch him with such ease and that's what you know makes him so special and I think he is one of the better center fielders in the game. I don't know if it'll be this year, but at some point he's going to win a gold glove. We all yeah. know that. Uh, but he is just you know incredible out there defensively in center field. Yeah, whether he wins that gold glove or not, he can be the uncrowned you know gold glove center fielder for the Braves. He's certainly uh, shown a lot over the first three years of his big league career and another one on this night. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only home run that was robbed. The other one was not nearly as exciting, but Matt Olson with a deep drive to center field that was dragged back in by Johan Rojas, who... It didn't have to even really leap, just had to kind of reach up and casually pull it down. Uh, 408 feet, I believe, to center field, 30-degree launch angle, just what you want, and dragged back in as an out on the warning track. That's as close as the Braves really got to a major scoring threat in this one, though we will talk about the one other time uh, as we go along. But that was, uh, it felt like it was just that kind of night as well for the Braves. The plays that needed to be made by the Phillies, the pitches that needed to be made, they were executing, and they got the job done. Matt Olson, what a rough night for him, and not because he did anything wrong, just unfortunate night for him, I guess you could say. He had a couple of balls in this game that he he stung, one early in the game that he hit the third base, great play over there by the third baseman, but he had balls of 100.4, 94.4, 102.1, and even another fly out at 86.7, but that one in particular, 408 feet. I mean, you feel like that that deserved a home run there. I guess in that, in that stadium, you got to get under a little bit more. That was only a 30-degree launch angle. Hayes was 37. Uh, but either way, just some tough luck for Matt Olson, who's been swinging the bat really well here lately. That does break his extra base hit streak. But, yeah. again, it took a great effort by the Phillies' defense to rob him of a couple of potential extra base hits. Yeah, and sometimes it's uh, you know the defense that does the job, even when you hit the ball well. But I don't think, as far as Matt Olson's swing is concerned, and kind of to your point you just made there, that you're going to be too upset with the quality of the contact that he was making. If he keeps doing that, some of these are either A, going to go over the wall, or B, they're going to touch down and he's going to continue to get some of those extra base hits. In the big picture, though, we knew this series was always going to be a challenge coming in. The Braves have had this, I'm sure, circled on their calendar as that opportunity to maybe make their move in the National League East. And we knew what had to happen, Jake, for that to be the case. They needed to take at least three out of four or perhaps sweep. And we knew that a sweep was going to be about as difficult as it gets against a team that's as good as the Phillies are in that ballpark, the way that they play and the players that they have. Uh, but now the Phillies have, and at, at worst, made it a situation where the Braves' best hope is a split in this one. And that, at the very least, is a little bit disappointing because you just rip four days off the calendar as it's getting ready to turn to the month of September. And these two teams don't see each other again in the regular season. So your head-to-head -head opportunity for the Braves, even though they will take the season series regardless of the outcome on Sunday, uh, this series wasn't able to be a stepping stone to anything bigger. 
Yeah, again, it was a tall task coming in with the the starting pitching you were going to have to face in this series, playing in their ballpark. Those fans there, they're incredible. I mean, I know fan, Braves fans don't like to hear it, but they are loud on every pitch, yeah. no matter the score. Even in a 7-2 game last night, any little type of rally, a ball here or there, you could hear that those fans getting going. So you know they were ramped up for this one. Like I said, this was their opportunity. We looked at it from our side as the opportunity to get back in the division. Mm -hmm. I think Phillies fans had to look at an opportunity to put this thing away and put it to bed. And, you know, if they, they split tomorrow, I think you still have a chance, but it is going to be a really tough one. But for the Braves, like you said, at this point, you're not going to have a chance to win it. You're not going to have a chance to really take a big step towards that division. And now you just want to try to get out of there with a the split, come back home, yeah. and get another winning streak going. Yeah, I mean, it was always going to be about the math, but when you get to those final 25 or 30 games, that math becomes an even bigger and more, I guess, troublesome factor for you because you just know that you're running out of games. And every game that you don't win, and this is true from April on or the late March, I guess, is when we really get things started. But uh, they just seem to heighten and become that much more important down the stretch. So for the Braves, this was an opportunity that uh, did not work out for them as far as being able to make a move. And the Phillies, at worst now, can at least continue to keep the Braves at an arm's distance in the overall division race. When we come back, we'll talk some more about the pitching duel in this game, what Max Fried did, uh, what Zach Wheeler did, obviously, a couple of more things about the top of the Braves lineup, which I know this wasn't a banner day for the entire lineup itself, but first couple of hitters here have been having some troubles getting on base. And that is something that they very much need to reverse and get rolling in a positive direction if they want to do the things that they need to do over the final month of the season. We'll get to that and much more as the Braves postcast continues. Get hydrated with the electrolytes, essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients from the number one powdered hydration brand in America. It is Liquid IV. You can blast off with the iconic summer flavor of Popsicle Firecracker, a festive blend of citrus-fueled lemon-lime, tart cherry, and raspberry flavors. No more thirsty summers when you indulge in hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code MLB at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using the promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. Well, let's look into the line score and the box score of this game and talk a little bit about the pitching matchup that we saw because it was quite a good one. Unfortunately, the Braves on the wrong side of it. The Phillies, with their 3 nothing win behind Zach Wheeler, able to take a two games to one lead in this series. For the Braves, they were shut out on six hits, no errors in this one. They left seven men on base. For the Phillies, three runs on five hits, one error. They left four men on base. Phillies in first place in the National League East. Pick up their 80th win of the year. They're 80 and 56. Braves are 74 and 62 on the season. Winning pitcher is Zach Wheeler. He is now 13 and 6. Estevez gets to save. That is his 23rd of the season. And Max Freed drops to 8 and 8, taking a tough luck loss in this game. Freed overall, as I talked about earlier, uh, seven innings of three run ball. He allowed five hits, had four walks in this one. So he did kind of battle. At times, it felt like, but never really seemed to get away from him. He always seemed to kind of be able to get right. Uh, but a couple of mistakes, most certainly on the home runs, or at least pitches that the Phillies hitters found to their liking as uh, Sosa and Turner both go deep against him. And that ultimately was really all it took for the Phillies to have all the run support they needed for Zach Wheeler. Just one of those tough luck appearances, really, Jake, for Max Fried in this one because the offense just couldn't seem to help him out. Yeah, a couple of pitches there, as you mentioned, a Sosa a slider that just stayed uh, middle down over the plate, and then a good at bat by Trey Turner. He gets a pitch up in the zone, and yeah, yeah. just got really quick hands, able to get up to that pitch. But uh, you know, Max Reed, you'll, you'll take seven innings, three earned most night, most nights for this Braves team. You just have to be going up against Zach Wheeler in this one, and uh, you know, again, I thought he was really good. I thought he was really effective, and I just I feel like maybe a little off the four walks, obviously, like you said, but able to rein it back in. You know, you go back to when he was coming off that injured list and we saw some of the issues with command. And at that point, he wasn't able really to to get it control of it and, and get it back together very quickly. But I think you saw that in this start where he did lose it for a moment. You know, next batter, he was right back on task and able to get those pitches over 50 percent fastball. in this one mm -hmm. uh, was kind of the one unique thing that I see about this outing for Max Freed, really going to that fastball heavy in this one and then just sprinkling in some of those other pitches. So I don't know, maybe he didn't have a great feel for some of those secondaries in this one. Maybe they just really felt good about the fastball. Ball, mm -hmm. uh, but I thought that was pretty pretty interesting. And maybe this was something to adjust off of his last start against the Phillies, which was not his most recent outing, but the one before that. Seven innings of two-run ball in that one. I believe that you know that you know being familiar with the pitcher, seeing him that soon, maybe they just wanted to try another wrinkle. And sometimes, like you said, when something's working, 
you just kind of stick with it and adjust off of it or pitch off of that as you need to. And Max Freed, certainly with a seven innings with three run ball, uh, not a bad outing. And most times that's going to be enough to give you a chance to win a baseball game. Unfortunately, uh, he was running up against Zach Wheeler, who held the Braves hitless with runners in scoring position 0 for 4 on the night, including a big strikeout of Jorge Soler with two on and two out. That seemed like the Braves' best threat other than the Olsen solo homer. And if you're a threat when you step in the batter's box, that's one thing. But as far as runners on base, this felt like the bigger opportunity the Braves had to maybe break through and try to get into this game. Uh, maybe a generous call on a fastball for the second strike, but Soler goes down looking for that third strike, and that was just a great, it's just a paint job by Wheeler on the outside part of the plate. Definitely a strike. The one before it, maybe not so much, but unfortunately for Soler, couldn't get the bat off the shoulder. Yeah, there was really two two spots in this game. I thought the Braves had a chance to, to get to Wheeler. One in the top of the third, as you're talking about, you get that error to begin the inning. You get first and third with one out for the top of your order with Merrifield. Puts the ball in play, but doesn't hit it deep enough for RCA to score. And then you still got Soler coming up a big, big bat there, but he can't come up uh, with the hit. And then later in the game, the top of the fifth, you had a couple of guys. You got two singles with two outs there. Soler up again in a big spot but gets called out on strikes. So unfortunately, Soler coming up in a couple of big situations in this game, not able to come through. But when you have those chances, especially at the top of the third, you got first and third one out against Zach Wheeler. You got to take advantage of those because you just don't get many as against Zach Wheeler. So again, not a lot of opportunities. I did think there were a couple of chances there where you had the opportunity to either score, you know, without, without the hit in the top of the third situation, but you had a chance with a big bat at the top of your order there to come through with that big hit. And they just weren't able to come through in this one. Yeah, and there weren't very many opportunities beyond that. Again, Braves 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position against Zach Wheeler and really the Philadelphia pitching staff in this one as uh, Jeff Hoffman and uh, Estevez also came in and tossed a couple of scoreless innings. Each of those guys giving up base hits, also picking up a couple of strikeouts. Braves lineup punched out 11 times in this game. I was looking at the top of the order, then we'll get back to Matt Olson in a moment. But uh, Whit Merrifield, after that five-hit game, has really been struggling to find himself some base hits. We talked about uh, how big it was, uh, you know, how how big of an adjustment it was from one game in Minnesota to the next, going from five hits to what zero for five, zero for six, whatever it was in that in that second game. But an zero for twenty three streak that was broken up by Whit Merrifield in this one, and he's been at the top of the lineup for the Braves leading off. Now the other man who has led off some for the Braves outside of Michael Harris has been Jorge Soler, who since coming back from his hamstring issue is two for 27 with one home run and one run knocked in. Now, he has drawn a bunch of walks that has helped in, in some way, shape, or form. But as far as the impact that you were hoping to get out of Jorge Soler, you're not seeing it lately. He's in the second spot of the order. Merrifield's been at the top of the order. When the top two hitters aren't setting the table, that makes it kind of difficult for the lineup to, as, as you would want to have it constructed with Ozuna and Olsen and everyone to follow, to have a chance to create a big inning or a big threat, particularly with the top of your order leading the way. Yeah, where's Ronald Acuna Jr. at? I mean, LA. it's been a it's been a struggle to really define somebody at the top of the order. The guy that's handled the, the best this year was Jared Kelnick in that really hot month that he had. He went up there and was really great at the top of the order, but it just feels like it's it's been a real struggle to get some guys at the top that can consistently get on base. And look, Wit, Wit was hot at the time. I certainly thought it was the right move to put him up there because even before the five-hit game, mm -hmm. he had been getting on base, getting his hits. But unfortunately, since that move, really – He's cooled off a lot. And so Lair, you know, like he's taking walks and that's great. He's getting on base, but you also like to see some more big hits out of him, some more home runs as well. So yeah, it's tough. It's tough, especially Ozuna had a bad night tonight. Three strikeouts at the plate. We talked about Olsen. He had some good contact, but he goes over four too. So yeah, your top of the lineup's not getting it done. Your top two guys aren't able to get on base for those big hits from Ozuna on most nights and Olsen, who's been hot lately. It's just tough. It's tough to score, especially against good pitchers like this if your top two hitters just can't consistently get on base for those guys yeah and this is not again i think kind of to your point this is not one of those fluky nights where the braves are, pace, are facing a pitcher that maybe they don't know too well and he's kind of able to smoke and mirrors his way through six or seven innings i mean this was a very well pitched game by zach wheeler it looked like he had you know complete command of everything the way that he you know typically can be at his absolute best and he was able to overmatch the Braves in those couple of spots. And the, and the opportunities for Atlanta to execute, they weren't able to do that. But they were precious few opportunities on top of that. Uh, Matt Olson did have that home run robbed in this game. So ending his streak of seven consecutive games with an extra base hit. But uh, a month of August that I will say overall, Jake, 
you have to be feeling a little bit better about the direction in which Matt Olson is trending heading into September because it seems that he has finally got his uh, power stroke back and he has been displaying that quite a bit here over the last week or two. Great to see. Obviously, we touched on it yesterday. I know they did a breakdown on MLB Network uh, as well, talking about the swing changes that he's made over the past month or so that really look like have helped him a lot get back to his 2023 form. So, again, is a big guy. I mean, hopefully you're getting those guys at the top on base and Witt, Soler, whoever's going to be batting leadoff because Ozuna's been great all year. If Matt mm-hmm. Olson gets hot now, this offense can take off, which it has done up to this point. And, you know, we talked about it yesterday. They had five straight games of scoring four runs or more. It's just you, you run into Zach Wheeler on a night like this, and there's just not much any offense can really do. But I think on most nights when you're not facing one of the two best pitchers in all of baseball this year, I think this offense is really going to be able to get clicking if Matt Olson can get back to his his normal self with his big power. Yeah, because if it's not Chris Sale in the Cy Young discussion, or if there is a 1A and a 1B scenario, I mean, Zach Wheeler, especially with a performance like this, continues to keep his name in that discussion as well. When we come back, we will preview game four of the series. The Braves very much looking for a sweep behind their talented rookie Spencer Schwellenbach. Phillies, meanwhile, looking to take this series and deal the Braves another blow in their hopes of winning the National League East for the seventh consecutive season. We'll talk about all of that as we continue here on the Braves Postcast. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. You can get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can also turn $10 into $1,000. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 U.S. states across the country, coast to coast, from California to Georgia. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code Locked On MLB. For a first deposit match of up to $100. That is code locked on MLB on prize picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy with prize picks. Well, Braves and Phillies will play game four of this series on Sunday. It'll be a Sunday night game. As we talked about, the Braves very much needed this series here to make any serious move on the NL East. And now, as we discussed yesterday, as far as scenarios are concerned, the best case is getting a split, which will bring them in no worse, or they'll leave no worse than they came into this series at five games out. If they are able to pick up that win on Sunday, the Phillies with their victory with the Saturday night game in game three are back up to six games ahead of the Braves in the National League East. Uh, But again, uh, this is uh, what the Braves need to do is find a way to split this series. And they're going to be throwing a talented young rookie who has seen the Phillies a handful of times. We'll get into the pitching matchup a little bit more later, but I don't know if we want to put biggest start of Spencer Schwellenbach's career on this because it's not like the entire season is hinging on it, but it is an important start for a rookie who has shown an awful lot to this club over the past three or four months. Yeah, I mean, this is a big start. I said coming in, I think you have to win the series to have a chance in the division, but certainly if you want to still have that chance going forward, I think you have to win on Sunday because you come out of this series yeah. seven games back you know, with 25, 26 games left, whatever it is, that's just too much. I mean, I know only sit still in absolutes, but it's over in my mind at that point. If that's the case, you lose the game on Sunday. So I think in that regards, it is a really big game. Uh, But either way, just for the Braves who need to win and they need all the wins they can get, the Mets aren't dropping games to the White Sox like the Braves have this year. They they just won again, so uh, they're going to pull within two games. You lose on Sunday, and the Mets you'll likely beat the White Sox again. You're only got a one-game lead on a postseason spot. So all these games are obviously very big for the Braves the rest of the way, but I think this is big for many reasons, just to get an earn a split on the road, which would be a huge accomplishment against this Phillies team just on its own. Uh, But yeah, going to be a big start for, for Spencer Schwellenbach. Sunday night baseball on the road against the Phillies, a chance to split that series. Yeah, if this Brave season, the 2024 Braves, were a Star Wars series, I would say it's probably the Acolyte. A lot of fans out there would be happy (laughs) if it were canceled, but we got a month here left to play, and we'll see what happens ultimately out of all that. But um, I saw on the broadcast as well for the Phillies, to give them a little bit more credit or a little bit more of a reason why they are as good as they are, 30 consecutive wins coming in when a Philly starter goes seven-plus innings. Zach Wheeler added another one today. I was wondering, I mean, I hadn't really thought about a stat like that. I mean, I guess it makes a lot of sense. Apparently, that's the second most in baseball history to the 1942 Cardinals. I mean, I love an awkward, not awkward, an oddity of a stat. And Jake, that is most certainly an oddity of a stat because I would have just thought somebody somewhere, maybe, especially when starters threw a lot more, 
would figure out ways to win those games. Maybe that actually makes it harder. I don't know. Yeah, no, that is a pretty interesting one. I think this is a lot about their their bullpen, too, that's been really good uh, this year, been able to close those games out. But that's what you want. I mean, as a, that's what good teams do. You get good starts like that, you finish it off, and you win games. And that's what this Phillies team has done. It's what they did a lot, obviously, in the beginning of the year. They've struggled a little bit more in the second half of the season. But they're, they're a great team. Look, I, I think all Braves fans should be able to admit that at this point. They are a great team over there. And they've certainly got it done when they needed to. They've got a great pitching staff that's been really good all season. And we saw on, the, on tonight, Zach Wheeler, one of the best when he's on. Yeah, and he definitely is. With Freed start, meanwhile, the Braves have 20 consecutive games with their starting pitcher allowing three earned runs or fewer. That is the longest at least since 1966 when the Braves moved to Atlanta. However, as we've discussed many times on this show already, it is hard to win a game like tonight's without any run support, and that's what Max Fried ran into, unfortunately. It's not going to get any easier for Atlanta on Sunday. The Phillies will send Aaron Nola to the mound, up two games to one in this four-game series, looking for three out of four. Rookie Spencer Schwellenbach gets the ball in the finale. Third start against Philly. Some pretty good numbers here as well. 12 and a third innings, three runs, one walk, 15 strikeouts. A couple of good starts of six innings or more. Braves would certainly like one of those on Sunday as well. Yeah, big start, uh, big start for Schwellenbach, as we said. Uh, Going to be probably the loudest environment. I think that's pretty safe bet to say. He's faced the Phillies twice, but both times at yeah. home. So it's it's going to be a a really big environment for the rookie, who is we've talked about just about every time he's pitched, he has seemed to be composed on the mound out there, and nothing has really seemed to phase him. So you hope that's going to continue to be the case on Sunday night. Another, hopefully, see another good start from him. He really had to battle in his last one; wasn't able to get through five innings. Twins hitters fouling off a lot of pitches against him, but still didn't allow any runs. So would love to see that again from, from Schwellenbach in your bullpen. You know, didn't have to use a lot of your big guys out of there on Saturday, so they should be ready to go. So if he can give you five, five-plus innings and you come out of there with a lead, you feel pretty good about your chances with your bullpen guys rested, ready to go. Yeah, you want to take a peek at the wild card standings as well. The Mets have now won three games in a row, so they are two games behind the Braves. For that final wild card spot, the Cubs are lurking just four games back. They've won eight out of ten, including five in a row. Meanwhile, the Diamondbacks have lost uh, back-to-back games. They're battling the Dodgers out in the desert tonight. And the San Diego Padres have kind of uh, fallen back a little bit in the pack. It's just to say that uh, the Braves are only two games behind the Padres and two and a half behind the Diamondbacks. That, of course, pending the outcome of their game on Saturday night. So we've got actually now, uh, Jake, at this point, Four teams that are kind of bunched up when not too long ago, you know, a week or 10 days ago, it was the Diamondbacks and Padres at five or more games ahead of the Braves in that third spot. This could be a very, very interesting month of September for a variety of reasons for a variety of teams. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I mean, this is what you love as a baseball fan. You're going into the last month of the season and you got four teams who are battling for three spots, five teams. I guess you want to uh, throw the Cubs in there who have been hot lately. So this, this is what you get with those, you know, with these extra wild card spots. You got more teams who are in it down the stretch. And this is what baseball certainly was hoping for. We can debate the expanded playoffs all day long if you want, but it has kept more teams interested in the postseason pitcher down the stretch and you know for the Braves while the Mets are catching them like you said the Padres and Diamondbacks have kind of hit a skid a little bit here too that's kind of kept the Braves close to them so giving them another possibility of somebody to to jump over for a while for a postseason postseason spot yeah and at least some small part of that was what the Mets have been doing as well they just got done playing both the Diamondbacks and the Padres in some pretty hard-fought games as well so uh, there could be a war of attrition in the month of September we'll see how it all plays out uh, but as we get into the final month of the season, it'll be Spencer Schwellenbach on the hill for the Braves. He'll be taking the ball against the Phillies in game four of the series. It is a 7 p.m. start as it is Sunday night baseball. Schwellenbach is 5 and 6, 372 ERA. Aaron Nola, this record may sound familiar, 12 and 6. That's what Zach Wheeler was coming into the day. 330 ERA for Nola. Braves know him extremely well, Jake, but uh, I don't know that there are any real secrets there, but there has been. At times, a bit of Jekyll and Hyde with Aaron Nola and the Braves. You're just hoping for maybe one of the uh, the latter there for him and not one of his, I would say, more vintage performances that he's known for. 
Yeah, exactly what I was going to say. It feels like it's either a really rough start for Aaron Nola against the Braves or it's six, seven innings of just one two-run uh, baseball. So, again, hopefully we get one of those outings where the Braves can get after him. And, and a lot of times with Aaron Nola, it happens early. So uh, you come out and jump on him early, take a, a lead. Like I said, you should have your bullpen rested and ready to go. Shwellem might can get you through five or five-plus innings. Feel good about your chances. But, yeah, hopefully you get the – the rougher version of Aaron Nola and the Braves can get after him, get the, that home run ball back that they were missing on Saturday night. Yeah, they could use the home run ball. They could use some hits with runners on base. You'll take a little bit of both of those. You'll take home runs with runners on base. There's a lot of different ways to score runs. The Braves need to figure out how to do that at least a few times in this game in order to have a chance against one of the better pitchers in the National League. It's Schwellenbach against Nola, game four of this series happening on Sunday night as it is a night game, Sunday night showcase for these two NL East rivals. That brings us to the end of this edition of the Braves Postcast. As always, we appreciate you riding along with us. Make sure to subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta here on YouTube. Leave us those likes and comments. Share the show with a friend and subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, the Braves shut out by a 3 nothing score. They will go for a series split with the Phillies on Sunday. We'll be back with you after that game. For Jake Mastriani, I'm Grant McCauley. Until next time, so long, everyone.